Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to solve shear force and bending moment diagrams. A shear force diagram shows how shear force varies along the length of a beam, while a bending moment diagram shows the variation of the bending moment along the length of a beam. I have chosen the following exercise and in order to solve it we will follow a series of steps. The first step is to name every node of the beam. After doing that, we have to recognize the types of supports on which the beam is fixed and we introduce the specific reactions for every support. In this case, there are two roller supports in points A and D. Therefore, we will introduce two vertical reactions, FA and FD. Next, we will write on the beam the remaining loads given by the problem. The second step consists of uh, calculating the roller supports reactions. In order to do that, we will use what is called the equilibrium equations. The first one uh, is sum of all forces acting on z-axis equal to zero, considering uh, positive z-axis points up. Here you will write all the forces that act perpendicularly to the beam. We can notice that uh, there is an uniformly distributed load of 6 kN per meter acting on 1 meter of the beam. So this will produce an equivalent force called F2B. To find out the value of this force, we multiply the value of the load applied and the length of the beam on which the load is applied on. After solving the first equation, we will get the mathematical relationship between the two roller support specific reactions FA and FD. The second equation is sum of all forces acting on x-axis equal to zero, considering uh, positive x-axis points right. We don't have forces acting on the x-axis of the beam, so this equation won't give us any reactions results in this case. Finally, the last equation, sum of all moments relative to a node, should be zero, where k corresponds to a specific node of the beam. Here you will take into consideration all the concentrated moments, or moments generated by every force or reaction relative to that node. To solve this moment equation, I use the following rule. Relative to any given node, if the force acts upwards to the left of the node, it will produce positive moment and if the force acts upwards to the right of the node it will produce negative moment. First we apply the equation for point A and we get the value for FD and after that we apply the equation for point D and get the value for FA. Now with all forces and reactions values known, we get to the third step where we will create the shear force diagram which will be named T. You will start the diagram from the farthest point to the left of the beam and end it to the farthest point to the right of the beam. You will take into consideration only forces and reactions when drawing this diagram. After naming every node of the beam in step 1, we got four sections. On AB section, the reaction from point A is minus 3 kN. Therefore, the diagram starts with minus 3 value on the negative side. On this section, there is also a distributed load of 6 kN per meter acting on 0.5 meters of the beam. So the generated force produced by this load will be 3 kN. This is why we started the diagram from minus 3 and reached minus 6. On BC section, there is this F1B force that acts upwards, that's why from minus 6 we get to 0. After that, we have the same load of 6 kN per meter acting on another 0 0.5 meters of the beam. So from 0, we go to minus 3. On CD section, there is no force applied, so we keep going linearly from minus 3 in point C to minus 3 in point D. We reached point D 
where there is the reaction from the roller support FD. So from minus 3, we go to 3 because we know that the value of FD is 6 kN. On DE section, there is no force applied, so we keep going linearly, reaching point E, where there is uh, the force called FE acting downwards. So from 3, we go to 0 because we know that the value of Fe is 3 kN and now the diagram is closed. The last thing to mention here is that all values of this diagram are expressed in kN. The fourth and final step is to, to draw the bending moment diagram which will be named M. You will start the diagram applying the same rule used to shear force diagram from the farthest point to the left of the beam to the farthest point to the right of the beam. The only difference would be that the science convention is reversed now. You will take into consideration every concentrated moment or moment produced by forces or reactions. A very important thing to mention here is that if there is an uniformly distributed load or a linearly distributed load acting on a part of the beam or the entire beam, it produces a parabolic representation of the moment in the diagram. To find out the value of the moment on any given node from a section, you will have to calculate the area of the geometric shape present on that section from the shear force diagram. Also keep in mind to check if there are another moments given by the problem in any node of the beam. We will start the diagram from AB section and to find out the value of the moment in this section we have to calculate the area of this trapeze. So from 0 we go to minus 2.25. On BC section we will add to minus 2.25 the value of this triangle's area and uh, we will reach minus 3. Reaching CD section we see this concentrated moment here which rotate, rotates clockwise in the positive direction so we add it to minus 3 and reach 0. Now we will add the area of this rectangle and we will reach minus 1.5. On the last section, we add the value of this rectangle and our diagram closes. All values of this diagram are expressed in kilonewtons meter. If the bending moment diagram doesn't close, it means there are some calculus mistakes in the equ equilibrium equations and we have to calculate the reactions again. To check the accuracy of our results we'll use a, a dedicated software and uh, we will do a brief comparison between what we calculated analytically and uh, what we got from the program. We can see that uh, the two diagrams, the shear force and the bending moment, Diagrams look pretty much like the ones we've drawn previously, which means our calculus was right. This was it for today's video. I hope now you have a better understanding of these two types of diagrams.